when we're looking at kinetics, we're talking about how the amounts of the reactants and the products change with time. We're making this very simple to begin with. We're just talking about reactants turning into products. First of all, we'll do a little graph. Here is concentration of something. The brackets mean concentration of. In this case, concentration of X means either reactant or product. We've graphed both on the same graph. And what we can see then is the reactants are going to decrease in concentration because they're getting used up. The products are gonna increase in concentration because they're getting created. Another thing that we notice is that there seems to be a curve going on here. It's not always true, but almost always true. It won't be a straight line. It will be a curve of some sort. So these concentrations for concentration of reactant and concentration of product are going to change. And we can look at them over a particular time interval. In this case, we've just decided T1 is the first time and T2 is the second time which would mean the change in the amount of time is T2 minus T1. The change in the concentration of R is going to be the concentration of R at T2 minus the concentration of R at T1. And similarly for the products, all right? Concentration at time T2 minus concentration at time T1. This starts to smell a little bit like calculus could be involved. And it is, but we aren't going to delve into it to the point where we will need to use calculus. But if you took more chemistry, they would in fact get into calculus. We're doing this in one chapter and you can take an entire course on kinetics. One thing we can say about this though is, if we are going to talk about an average, because in this case, we have to talk about average if we're doing this as a, a unit of time that's, you know, fairly significant rather than instantaneous. The instantaneous would be how we would get into the whole calculus thing. But if we're going to do it as a discrete sort of thing, we would have an average product creation rate. We would be able to figure out what that was simply by taking the change in concentration of P over delta T. It is coming into existence and it's going to be the change over the amount of time. Now here is a tricky one. Average reactant consumption rate. I am now consuming it. How fast am I consuming it? Should this be negative? No, it shouldn't be negative. And if I just did delta of R over delta T, it would be a negative number because this one is smaller than that one. So when I took this and subtracted that, I would end up with a negative number. But I'm talking about how fast it's being consumed because of the wording. I would have to change the sign on this. So you have to be a little careful when you see wording to interpret it properly. So how fast is the reaction occurring? Well, that's got to be part of what is going on, right? But unlike what we just saw where we just had reactants turning into products and both of them had a coefficient of one, now we have real numbers in here. If I were to look at this thing and talk about how fast this was disappearing and how fast this was disappearing, I would expect those two numbers to be the same because both of them have a coefficient of one. This, however, has a coefficient of two. So it's coming into existence twice as fast as that is going out of existence. How then am I going to talk about the reaction rate? In this case, I will be saying that the reaction rate is negative because I don't want to come up with a negative number for my reaction rate. I want it to be a positive number. It is occurring. So I have to have this negative sign. And then since this has a coefficient of one, I could just use that. I could also say the reaction rate here was negative delta concentration of O2 over delta T. So this rate has to be divided by the stoichiometric coefficient, so the rate's the same for all the chemical species. If I was trying to do it in terms of this, 
this would always be twice as much. Then I would have to divide this by two. That's why it says divide by the stoichiometric coefficient. So we see that these three are all exactly the same number. This would normally be a negative number, but if I put a negative here, it will now be a positive number. Same with this one. But this would happen twice as fast, and so this would be double what this was. So I have to use the two down here to counteract it. So whatever that coefficient is, it ends up being in the denominator instead. These concentrations are decreasing at half the rate at which the concentration of NO increases. So these are half the rate of the NO.